Oh, oh God, he just hit that guy. He fucking took a, he sideswiped the motherfucker and he's still going. Holy shit. <laughs> what? Wait, what's going on? I, I, I hit record. You, I, I was recording the whole time you're watching that car chase. You sound like you want him to hurt people. I, I don't want him to fucking hurt people, but I mean, if it's going to fucking happen, I mean, Christ, dude, less cars on the road for me. <laughs> <laughs> less cars for Brandon, everybody. Yeah, there's car chases in L.A. all the time. That's kind of one of the, um, depending on how you look at it, a downfall or if you're Brandon, a benefit to living here. He is addicted to live streams of car chases, and there's one going on right now, and I can't pry him away from it. Put your phone down. I, uh, We're doing a podcast. I already hit record. We're recording now. Fuck. Uh, I, they're going to hear you gleefully describing someone recklessly driving into other people. What do you, what do you, what do you think in here? Like there, Oh, there's fewer people on the freeway. More room for Brandon. Dude, it's fucking LA traffic, man. I need any advantage I can get, man. Like I, it, you have to imagine though, that like all these people seeing this crazy fuck going down the road the wrong way and shit like that. They're like, Oh no, it's just a woman driver. It's normal in LA. Like, <laughs> Come on. You, what? Can't, you can't say shit like that. This, this is a, you know, like we're a, we're a progressive okay. podcast. I mean, you're the dump truck. You're the whatever. The dump truck driving the wrong way on the freeway. And, but, you know, I'm the progressive, handsome, you know, overly sexualized by everybody else. Um, person that everybody looks up to. But tell me that everything I didn't just describe is something you haven't experienced with women drivers here in L.A. I'm not answering that question. I, come on, man. I will say that everyone's a bad driver, period. Um, do I, do I keep, uh, statistics on their race and gender? No, I'm just saying, man, I'm just pretty sure that people are watching this and like, it's just a fucking other woman down the road. Well, the fucking guy who's <laughs> driving, man, he's like, oh, well shit. Now I know what it's like to be a woman driving around LA for a day. All right. Yeah, all right, right. All right. All right. All right. We are the Valley boys. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm your host, Dave Weasel. Join with me is Brandon Collins. He's my, oh yeah. We usually pick one, assistant or psychic, but you, you know what? He's just, he's my best friend for better or worse, oftentimes worse, usually worse. We're, we just did a podcast. This is good. I feel like we're, we're going to come back into this. This is uh, going to be a regular thing again. We just shifted gears a little bit. Um, we are going to shift gears a little bit differently. Normally, we do the, uh, uh, the little game. California, Florida, Canada, man. California, Florida, man. So, Brandon, if you don't know, if you've never made it to the end of one of our podcasts, Brandon reads out different headlines, and I have to guess whether or not it happened in Florida, Canada, or California. And I usually cheat in the old studio. I would cheat all the time because I could get away with it. Here I can't. I'm fully exposed. I've got uh, my phone on the table. I've got my pants down. Um, uh, his tiny pecker sticking out. Yep. So it, It's cold. I'll give him that. It is a little chilly. I'm wearing a jacket. You're in your you're in your usual shorts and t-shirt in cold Cal, for California cold weather. Uh, hopefully, yeah. wherever you are, you guys are all bundled up. I know that this this episode is coming out on Thanksgiving Day or the day previous to that. Um, so yeah, you're probably you, listening to this while you're driving to your parents' house. Yeah, you get sick of your family shit. Just throw us on. Uh, we'll make you forget about life in general really yeah exactly and just channel us and they'll you you will not be invited to any more family gathering so brandon let's do the let's do the game all right so what is uh again to explain it he reads a headline i guess whether it came from california florida or canada yeah no wh whether the individual man the individual, or man yeah. or woman because florida we, man california man or yeah woman. yeah exactly i believe in equality um, everybody can be a piece of shit. So uh, let's get this thing fucking rolling. Particularly here. in Florida, <laughs> I feel like Florida woman is its whole other species. Probably that's where STDs come from. Anyways, Brandon, let's go. <laughs> All right, number one this evening is man wrestles puppy from animal's jaws without dropping his cigar. Is that Florida man, California man, or Canada man? Man wrestles puppy from, sorry, animal's jaw. What what animal? Uh, well, it, you know, uh, just use your imagination and, uh, you know, the fucking guy wrestled the animal to, uh, to get his fucking puppy back okay. without dropping a cigar in his mouth. OK, the cigar is a big is a big factor in this. Um, that does suggest Canada. But the animal that he wrestled it from plays a big part in this. And the fact that you won't tell me it suggests exactly that. So if it was in in Canada, it would be a moose's jaw. 
There's a, t- there's a town called Moose Jaw, probably for that reason. Someone wrestled a, a puppy from a moose's jaw. So uh, that would be Canada. If it was Florida, it would be like an alligator. They're always grabbing pets and shit. And if it was California, it would just be another. It would be a chihuahua grabbing another chihuahua or a pit bull. Yeah, or ice pit bull uh, fucking kicking, <laughs> kicking those chihuahuas out. They're, they're, hey, they're, 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 they're not sending us our best, man. They're sending chihuahuas and... Uh, You're talking about animals, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, God. man. They, you look, know what? I'd be fine if they deported all the chihuahuas. Uh, you know how I feel about them. Um, I, I Yeah, let's build a little catapult, throw them all over. They can go... Uh, you heard it here first, folks. Dave I- Weasel for Trump 2024. No, I didn't Dave- say that. <laughs> what are you talking about 2024? Anyways, back to the game. Oh, yeah, you're right, because he's still going to win in uh, 2020 after no, uh, Biden no, gets done cheating. No, that's not what I'm saying. Don't right. do that thing that I do to you. Right. Back to me. This isn't how it works. Anyways, if uh, because you didn't say the animal, which w- I- I'm going to think it's a gator, which to me suggests Florida. I'm going to go with Florida, man. Uh, you know, uh, for being a liberal, uh, you're smarter than you look. Uh, it's absolutely <laughs> Florida. Yeah. Yeah, and granted, like, it wasn't the biggest gator in the world, but yeah, this, like, fat fuck probably me in 20 years. And he was smoking a cigar? He had a cigar hanging out of that, his that's mouth. That's Florida. His, yeah. Or Bakersfield, California, or Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. But yeah, Florida. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to find a pet alligator in Bakersfield. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, just, I mean, tiny little puppy chihuahua size, not one of those dirty rats, though. And uh, he just has a cigar in his mouth, just, just kind of lackadaisically, just like, give me my fucking dog back, you little fucker, just cranking his jaws back and taking his dog get the fuck out of here man how is the dog after do you know i don't know probably alive i guess it wouldn't that would be part of the headline was he wrestled his dead dog away from an alligator yeah i'm, I'm not real big on reporting dead animal headlines it's like dead people all day but people deserve to die but uh yeah not a little puppy dog Yeah, not the animals yeah I, I, yeah i feel like on that they're fine so no dead animals all right so. all right second one what all do right. we got Second one, lawmakers face backlash for coronavirus conference in Hawaii as coronavirus restrictions tighten. Are those lawmakers from Florida, California, or Canada? Okay, so just to clarify, the lawmakers are in one state and they all traveled to Hawaii. They they traveled to Hawaii to have a conference to discuss how best to mitigate <laughs> coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> the spread of coronavirus in yeah a they, small environment uh, and, right yeah okay, on an right. island where they can't get away yeah absolutely so okay. uh yeah well and uh, that, that type of stupidity does cross borders as much as people like to shit on america they, that's is that a hint cross border because there's only one anyways i feel like uh hawaii is a weird place to get mad about uh catching a virus all of a sudden you know because all these conferences that happen there Half of the people there walk away with hepatitis C. Yeah. You know, you ever see those commercials about it? They don't show you going to Idaho. No. I, hepatitis C. It's always tropical environments. They got that, uh, that Brandon Hawaiian shirt on. So suddenly they're worried about catching a virus and bringing it around. Um, I feel like it's not Florida. Okay. Because number one, they, they already are a, a, a quasi tropical environment. They, uh, they, they don't really like Hawaii as much. Canada is a solid, solid guess, but it is still crossing borders. Um, California is is under scrutiny right now because of our current lockdown laws. Tonight is the second last night. We can go out and get sauced at the Dipsy Cow. Oh, we're going to fucking talk about that. Old Brandon's got a thing or two to fucking say about uh, Kim Jong-un something in his bullshit. Ah, here we go. Yeah, so, okay. I'm going with uh, California. God, man, you're uh, you're you're five in a row now, man. Absolutely. And it was a shitbag who used to be a Republican, halfway decent, respectable human being, (laughs) and then decided he came over to the dark side. What's up? No, yeah, came. No, he he became an independent and he's doing shit like this. And The fucking soundbite from this fucking guy is like, well, you know, this is very important that we need to do this to discuss how we're going to prevent getting coronavirus by traveling out of state. And, uh, yeah, fucking and sucking for, uh, you know, a few days in Hawaii. <laughs> and then we're going to travel back to uh, the fucking plague land, California, and uh, tell everybody <laughs> how to stay safe. That is exactly what you do in Hawaii. I mean, the one time that your catchphrase, fucking and sucking, yeah. and apostrophe, that's that's exactly what goes on in Hawaii. No well, one goes to Hawaii and is like, oh, like, look at the landscape. This is beautiful. No, nah, man, they get wrecked on them pina coladas, and then they're like, hey, check out my penis colada. And everyone catches that hep C. 
Well, especially here in California, we got beaches and palm trees, so you got to have a little something extra, you know? Right, yeah. But here, here it's all about the herp. It's just like Winnipeg. Herpes is rampant in Winnipeg. Like, one in three people have herpes. Like, in the nursing homes, even. And that's kind of like California. You're going to catch... <laughs> <laughs> the, the nursing homes of Winnipeg are exactly like California. Exactly, yeah. Everyone's got the herp. Well, the nursing homes, the drug dealers, the your, your, the person pumping your gas, everyone's got the herp in Winnipeg. It's one. It's like, it's on the welcome sign. Right, and so we've been over all this shit ad nauseum. It's like, wear your mask, socially distance, stay away from people in other households. Wear like a condom, gathering. face the same way when you fuck. Exactly. And uh, so, like, it, it's a crock of shit, and it's on the taxpayer dime, of course, because these... They're lawmakers. Yeah, they're not paying for that shit out of their Christmas bonus. How the fuck did the criminals become the lawmakers? That's what I want to fucking know, but... That, that's a fucking debate for another time. But anyhow, so moving on to story number three. All right. Man chased, tackled, had keys stolen, and then carjacked. <laughs> Was that Florida man, California man, or Canada man? I like how the shitty man in this is the guy who got chased, is the guy who got tackled, is the guy who got carjacked. Well, well see, and my whole thing is, like, it doesn't happen, have to happen in the state or country where the person resides because people can be shitty no matter where they go. If you're a shithead in Florida or California Oh, this or sounds Canada, like Canada. And you go somewhere else, you're going to be a shitty person no matter where you end up, more than likely. I agree, but what I'm saying is, like, usually in these headlines, they vilify... Like, half of it is vilifying the the environment. Florida man gets naked, farts in a meth lab, and dies. You know? So, it's it's like, oh, that's Florida for you. Um, but in this case, they're like, look at this piece of shit man getting tackled. This piece of shit got carjacked. What a pussy. Yeah. Um, now, given how... I, I feel like it's a little too tame for Florida. You know, like, was, was anyone naked in this story? Was no. anyone on meth? Uh well, uh, not naked as far as meth. I have no idea. The meth but isn't reported, so we can eliminate Florida in my mind. Well, now, I'm not saying that meth wasn't involved. I just didn't see it reported in the story. Fair enough. Uh, California, uh, th- there are carjackings here, but I feel like it wouldn't even make the news. They'd be like, they they have so many other carjackings to report that um, one where someone was chased and not hurt. No one was naked, wouldn't make the news. So I'm going to go with Canada. Jesus Christ, you were six I'm for six. six, for six two weeks in a, in a fucking row. All three. What oh, are the but, odds of that, man? Yeah, but all right. Now, the best part, Dave, where in Canada specifically do you think this happened? Okay. I, and I'm not giving you any hits. Just where in Canada do you think this happened? You bet. Put your phone down, okay. you fucking. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, Cocksucker. I'm going to. Well, okay, British Columbia, it's a little too hippy-dippy for that. Um, yeah, the California, Alberta, Canada. Every, everyone can afford their own car, you know? Yeah, the Texas of Canada. The worst case scenario is someone has to take, take out their Volkswagen instead of their uh, their Audi. Uh, Saskatchewan is in the riding. Manitoba, definitely. Ontario is, is, is too common. The fact that you're asking means it's one of the bullshit places. <laughs> uh, in the East Coast or Quebec... I'm going to go with Saskatchewan. Oh, ever so close. Uh, it's in a particular neighborhood in a particular city, and that neighborhood is St. George. Is that in Winnipeg? Yes, absolutely. Never heard of St. George. Oh, wait, hold on. It's one I'm... of them French areas, I guess. Wait, hold on. I've been... Uh, I've they been... have, like, three French areas. Well, hold on. I've been drinking. Um, do, do, Man, you got to watch out, man. I, I went out with a French girl one time. Yeah, Winnipeg. Didn't understand Saint a George fucking area. word she said, so, but yeah. I don't understand words that people, English girls speak either. So whatever. Fair enough. Uh, Hancock Avenue. Does that sound familiar? No, but that that sounds like something. That hand Hancock, like a space in between. That would be a Winnipeg street for sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. Twenty four year old man was at the back of a home on. Han- uh, oh, I'm sorry, Havel Lock. Oh yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm I'm a little oh, drunk. Oh yeah, that's in hey. the that's in the shitty. Yeah, that's Saint, in the shit. Saint George neighborhood around eight thirty p.m. Two people pulled out a knife and demanded the guy give him uh, their his keys and vehicle, and he fucking ran away and they chased him down. Yeah, that sounds like Winnipeg. <laughs> that sounds like Winnipeg. The fact that he ran away, and the fact that they chased him. So one time, me and my friend Craig were uh, we were drinking at my lesbian friend Stacy's house. Shout out to her. Um, we I used, love lesbians. Yeah. 
we were we were there all night and we we walked out of there at 6 a.m with right. with a with a giant like just like this like a, a handle as they call it, a 60 ounce bottle uh whatever was left of it yeah 1. We, we were walking out liter. in the morning um back to craig's car we put it in the trunk you know and uh these two guys approached us uh demanding our my hat that's what they wanted that not the whiskey with the hat and we're like, nah, get the fuck out of here. And we get in the car. And the one guy was holding, was, so Craig got in the car, shut his door. He's driving. I get in the passenger seat. I get in. I put my seatbelt on. I'm trying to close the door. And these guys are holding it open. They're like, give me, either give me your hat or you get the shots, meaning punches in the face. All right. And uh, Craig, he's sitting there with his fucking mouth open, looking at me with his keys in his hand. And in my brain, I'm trying to telepathically tell him, start the car and drive. Like we have a severe advantage here. Yes, and and the, and they're like serious. So like, give me the hat, and I'm dodging. I'm, I was you know saying some dumb shit like, oh, take it easy. <laughs> Very Canadian. Yeah, hey, hey, like, hey, pal, hey, settle down over there. Yeah, Come on, buddy. Yeah, we're all friends. And they're trying to take off my seatbelt. They're trying to like pull me out of the car. And Craig's standing there like a or sitting there like a, with his keys. And and I just very calmly say to Craig. Put the keys in the ignition and drive away. <laughs> and so he does. And then, you know, I, I could feel their fingers slip off of me, you know, as he drives away. I shut the door. Yeah. And then uh, uh, we're driving away and I turn back and they're yelling, get back here. <laughs> it's just, just like, hey, buddy, uh, we're trying to rob you. Yeah. Yeah. That's Come not very nice, Bella. <laughs> How dare you make your escape? And, and, I, and I always wondered that, like, has that ever worked? In the case of a robbery where someone very clearly gets away and the robbers say, get back here. I and you're like, all right, okay. I'm coming back. I reside. You can have my hat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're trying to, it was a Ghostbusters hat from Spencer's, you know? It wasn't even like a like a like a baseball hat or something. It was a fifteen dollar hat. Yeah. And they wanted it. And I'm assuming the alcohol from the I don't know if they saw that, but regardless. That's the story about uh, almost getting robbed in Winnipeg. I was robbed a different time because I lived downtown my last three years there. And it's kind of fucked up how it happened. I was, I was minding my biz. It was the middle of winter, too. I was out for a walk because I always used to walk with headphones in, you know. And this is when I had one of them classic iPods. This is how long ago it was. Jesus Christ. And I'm, it's like minus 30 out. It's nighttime. It's, you know, past midnight. And these three people... They came up and they hit me with a bat in the chest. Like not, but like the butt end of the bat. Sure. Like they didn't fucking Babe Ruth swing at me, but uh, they, they hit me. To, and then I went down. I was out of breath, you know, and uh, and they're like, uh, <laughs> it was two men and one woman. <laughs> <laughs> the funny part's coming. So they're going through my, sh they're just going in my pockets and taking things out. God damn it. And they dude. got the $15, the three $5 bills. Those blue bills that uh, Canada has out of my front pocket. And the one woman, and this is this was their downfall, was the woman that was with them was just standing there watching it. And she said, hurry up, fuck. We got to get to Max, the convenience store. Yeah. Before they stop serving the chili cheese fries. <laughs> <laughs> so they take my 50. They don't take my cell phone. They don't take my iPod, but they get the $15 in their gut. So whatever. I call the police and... Uh, so, you know me, I got, uh, my brain is not wired the same way as a normal human being, right? I got that little condition where, uh, I'm on this spectrum as they call it. And, uh, things, information processes differently for me. I can't remember faces period or read maps. Yeah. We got spectrum. Or have a stable internet. relationship or go in the bathroom, uh, in, in a toilet. I have to do it in the corner of a room. You know how it goes. So anyways. Uh, the police come and they're like, can you describe them? I'm like, <laughs> no, but I could draw the motherfucker. <laughs> so I did. I did a little sketch. Of them. They're like, holy shit, this matches. A <laughs> the cop was so surprised. He's like, this matches four other identical robberies that happened exactly when this happened in the exact area. And I was like, well, no shit. <laughs> Jesus so, Christ, man. Those people love their chili fries. Yeah, they went They went and robbed a whole bunch of people. They got, and whatever, the guy the guy who hit me uh, went down for assault. You know, I had to fill out this victim impact statement. 
And I was like, I am scared to leave my house downtown at midnight all of a sudden now. (laughs) (laughs) But they got the fucker and he was out on probation. So he went to jail for that shit. But uh, he he did. They did it to several other groups of people, you know, and it's just like, you know what? If you're going to do that, if you're going to go down for chili cheese fries, fifteen dollars worth of it. uh, Yeah. Hit up a bunch of them, I guess. That makes sense. Right. If you're a criminal. I don't because they lumped all the charges together. They didn't get charged with four separate cases of robbery and assault. They were charged with one, despite it being four different people. You have some weird fucking laws in Canada, man. No, that was an indiv- that was a particularly weird case. But you know what? Uh, I did my part. They went down. If he's out there listening, <laughs> you didn't steal my iPod, which is funny because now it's not even worth fifteen dollars. But hey, maybe I should. Uh... Yeah, maybe I should just make like all the Canadian stories from Winnipeg, and then that <laughs> that way you wouldn't Winnipeg be able. Man. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be able to decipher decipher if it's like Florida or uh, uh, Winnipeg or uh, or maybe I'll just make the California ones from like the Inland Empire or something like that, like Norco or something. Oh man, that place is a shithole. No offense, but yeah, garbage dump. Is is Ontario, California, in that area? Uh, it's close. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember a story on Jim Rome years ago where there was a golf course in Norco and they set up these tents with hookers and you know how I feel about hookers. And, uh, yeah, so they had these hookers, uh, literally. So, uh, after you, uh, finish the, uh, you know, the front nine, you can, uh, play the hookers back nine if you want. Gross. What? what so what? many analogies in that. Oh, that, well, that's not nearly You're as. You're not talking about golf. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I that's mean. That's not mini putt. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, any hole's a goal, right? When you're on the golf course. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Oh, that's not even the most disgusting Brandon joke you've heard from me. Oh, not even close. Ah, oh, Christ. So that's the other thing. The people have spoken, unfortunately. Much to my chagrin. My people. I don't know why the fuck you guys like his dumb that's what she said jokes. You know what it is? They Almost every single time someone talks about your that's what she said jokes, they don't really like the jokes. They like the fact that I hate it. So, you know what? Anytime you say that's what she said, I'm going to be like, oh, that's funny. You should be a comedian or something. You know, I'm not going to react to it the same way anymore. No, no, you say so that. You guys ruined it. I, we, need to, we need to band together and get Brandon to stop saying that's what she said. No, no, but the people love to see you mad. That's what's so great. And I will catch you. I don't I, understand I will, that. I Why will, does everyone like seeing me get fucking worked up? Because it's hilarious. I'm sitting here like five feet no, away from not. you and it's no, hilarious. It's Social distance because we do it safe here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all right. Well, uh, all right, well, here's here's uh, here's Brandon's uh, joke of the week for you all. Yeah. So, anyways, that's what that whole thing was about. Uh, you guys want to hear a dumbass Brandon bar joke? So we're gonna do this while he's doing that. I'm gonna take a break and, you know, not listen. Do everything I can to not listen to this joke. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, he's gonna flick his penis to see if it's still there. What a great intro! Imagine if someone did that while I was doing stand up. That happened before. Sorry, real quick. Yeah. In Winnipeg. We did this uh, King Cans of Comedy, you know, like the Kings of Comedy, but it was about drunks. Uh, yeah. I, I and the host it. of it was from the other side of the railroad tracks in Winnipeg. The comedy scene there was divided. Wait, and there's a good part of Winnipeg? No, no. Other side. <laughs> just, <it's laughs> like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's just like the two shit sides. But uh, I, I just mean like there was uh, in the comedy scene, it was divided into two. And on the other side, the guys that hated you know, all the people coming to see me, a newcomer, and uh, one of them came and hosted this event. And I was like, so a thing that I like to do is when I get introduced, instead of saying, oh, he wrote for this show, he did that, but describe what a piece of shit I am. So imagine this. You're in a comedy club. Yeah. And you're like, your next comedian, he's a fucking alcoholic he goes to 7-eleven buys their steel reserve he walks around the neighborhood and drinks it by himself and for dinner he has a burrito and it's a dave weasel like that kind of shit it's way funnier to me it's amusing whatever so this guy wasted two minutes introducing me just talking about what a piece of shit i am from his heart of hearts (laughs) just like and everyone's laughing he's like stop laughing this guy is the worst human being i've ever met yeah, like he, he doesn't realize all he's doing is just making your job easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, it's like, oh, yeah. Like, on one hand, he gets to vent out what a piece of shit I am on stage in front of a bunch of people. And and it, it, it helps me because it sets the bar so low that when I walk on stage, if I say anything funny, I, I've already exceeded expectations, 
Which, by the way, kids, if you want to get into stand-up or you want to do anything, artistic, musical, whatever the fuck, don't oversell yourself to people. Jesus Christ, set the bar low and exceed those expectations because if you tell everybody, hey, I'm a solid 8 out of 10. Come and see me do my thing. I'm 8 out of 10. And people go and you're a a solid 7 out of 10, but you don't deliver expectations. They're going to walk out and be like, that motherfucker was a six out of ten, you know. But if you say, "Hey, I'm a I'm a solid uh, six out of ten, and you deliver a seven out of ten, they're gonna walk out of there being like, "That motherfucker was eight out of ten. What a great show he had!" Even though it's the exact same thing. Anyways, intro over. Brandon, tell your shitty joke. So this middle aged couple, right? They've uh, kind of got a little stagnant in the bedroom, and uh, they decide they need to go to a sex therapist to figure out how to spice things up, right? So they go to the therapist and they start talking about all their problems in the bedroom and therapist is listening and says, well, well, I think I have the solution for you too. He says, uh, have you ever heard of a Cleveland steamer before? A little bit prudish middle-aged couple. Uh, no, what's that? He says, well, it's where one of you will lay down on the floor completely naked. The partner, also completely naked, will squat down over your chest and let out this big steaming shit. And it sounds gross, but I guarantee you'll get so horny, you'll come all over the place. It's the most amazing thing you've ever experienced. And they kind of look cringe a little bit, and they're looking at each other. I'm not sure. He's like, well, has it worked? You know, and he says, oh, yeah, it's worked for countless other couples. I guarantee it's fireproof. So uh, they're like, all right, well, anything to, you know, fire uh, fire up the, uh, the bedroom time again. So they go home, right? And, uh, you know, they get undressed. Husband lays down on the floor first. Wife, also naked, squats down over him. Let's out just the biggest steaming pile of shit you ever seen in your life. This guy, he just fucking starts coming like crazy, man. It's like a lawn sprinkler all over the uh, fucking... Hey, 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 God damn it, Dave. Let me finish here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, da, da, da. No, don't you do that thing oh, that I do to you. Yeah. Kind of kind of right, yeah. So he's he's lawn sprinkling. He's, he's lawn sprinkling all over the fucking place, right? And he's like, so the wife asks the husband, like, well, how was it? He's like, I, it's the most amazing orgasm I ever experienced in my life. Well, she gets super excited. She's like, all right, well, it's my turn now. So she lays down on the floor. Husband squats down over her. And he's straining. He's pushing. He's trying everything he can. And after a couple minutes, the only thing he gets out, this little tiny fart, right? Well, all of a sudden, the wife just starts bursting out in tears and crying, and the husband turns around and is like, well, honey, what's the matter? He's like, oh, you bastard. It's apparent that you don't love me anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. If Fawn Enthusiastic Handjob had a mascot, uh, it would be Dave's face right now. What? That it's was hilarious. Funny. It's, funny. it's funny. See, it's, it's funny, funny because it's he couldn't stupid. shit on her chest. It's I hilarious. It. I, it. I understand the joke. It's just not fucking funny, man. And you got that shaggy dog element to it, too, where it goes on and on and on. And, oh, buddy, buddy. Dude. I don't know why you people like that. I, what do you why mean does you? everyone think you're funnier than me? You ain't shit. <laughs> a big steaming pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't a Cleveland steamer. The worst thing, I mean, it's you. You never want to start off anything by saying I have a Cleveland steamer story. <laughs> but hang on, somebody that I don't like, and we don't like. Uh, he doesn't understand English very well, and it's an asshole thing to fuck with people that that. You know, English is not their first language, but this guy unless was a they're com- assholes too, then fair right, game. exactly. This guy was a complete fucking narcissistic, gaslighting piece of shit asshole who one day asked, "What's a Cleveland steamer?" And someone who shall not be named um, said, "It's a blowjob without missing a beat." You know, and uh, he's like, "Okay." Now, in this cartoon alternate reality, this guy goes and asks for a Cleveland steamer. And some girl is like, yeah, okay, I'm into that. You know, I'm going to do that. What are you doing, man? Are you pouring more whiskey? You fucking lush? Goddamn right I am. You're goddamn alcoholic? All right, pour mine too. I can't. I'm around all the equipment. You fucking dick. Well, you know, thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, we we uh holy that's good, that's good. Uh, <laughs> we're we're a couple of drunks here on the Valley Buzz. Uh we were we were out drinking t- so like I said, um we're recording this. It's Monday the twenty third. Uh it's two days. We're exactly forty eight hours. Uh forty nine hours before LA goes into complete lockdown. I don't know where I'm gonna hide out. Maybe Ventura, maybe Ocean Beach, but Finish got, your fucking Cleveland steamer story. That was it. I already did. You weren't paying attention because you were fucking pouring liquor and drinking. Well, it you down put me gullet. on bitch duty. God damn it! I didn't put you on bitch duty. You just you you drank all your booze because you're a, you have a problem. Uh, you're always at Tipsy Cow or at the, this place in Sherman Oaks. Fuck! I don't like naming businesses, you know. But whatever. This place in Sherman Oaks, getting sauced all day. You and Jarrett. Uh, it, it, fucking saucy ape Dave over here fucking saucy accusing ape me. Dave again with this shit. Whatever, man. That didn't catch on. You said that last time. It's been a few days since the last podcast. No one's called me saucy ape Dave. Well, actually, like eight people did. But that doesn't uh, <laughs> that, that doesn't mean it's catching on. You well, know? I want sixteen people this week. Start calling him saucy ape Dave. No, don't. Do not call me saucy ape Dave. If you're gonna call me saucy ape Dave, uh, you, you better start calling Brandon. Uh, what's the name you don't like? That's the problem. That's the problem. Is like they're. No matter what name I assign to you, you like it. I'm Therefore, a, defeating all the all, all purpose in it. I'm a teenage dirtbag baby. Effect. Yeah, you are. Um, whatever. The fuck are we talking? About? Jesus Christ! Oh yeah, the lockdown. The lockdown. That's going into full effect in 49 hours. It is now nine o'clock p.m. Oh yeah, that's on right. On Monday yeah, night, we, we're going into lockdown. Uh, Brandon, you were all fired up about this shit, man. What's I, going I'm on with you? I'm still fucking fired what are you up thinking, about buddy? this shit. So, again, uh, the great dictator, Kim Jong-un some of the Democratic <laughs> People's Republic of California, uh, implemented these new lockdowns for, you know, supposedly the worst fucking counties. And uh, L.A. County's medical director, Barbara Ferrer, a.k.a. Edgar Winter. I think Edgar, <laughs> I think Edgar Winter at this point looks better than Barbara Ferrer, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, so Edgar Winter's one of them. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Yeah, 70s rock stars. Yeah, but uh, he's one hit wonder. What's his, what's his condition there? Oh, he's albino. He's albino. Yeah. Yeah, Barbara Ferrer. Yeah, she looks like uh, whatever. Anyhow, um, so we we've been doing like outdoor patio dining here in L.A. Like open air. Uh, you have to wear a mask, social distance, the whole fucking nine yards, man. It's about as safe as you can possibly fucking get. And L.A. County, for whatever reason, has decided now that that's the most egregious thing that's spiking cases of coronavirus. So as of 10 p.m. Wednesday night, all restaurants have to cease all dining. Doesn't matter if it's outside, open air for three fucking weeks. And this is after a lot of them for months have already been you know, just pounded by restrictions, regulations, everything out the ass. We've lost thousands of businesses already. We're there's a county L.A. County a board supervisor who's estimating this is going to affect about 700,000 people, business owners, employees, everybody. We've already got about a million and a half uh, EDD unemployment cases in California backed up the way it fucking is. A lot of these restaurants aren't going to make it past that three weeks because they've barely been hanging on the way it fucking is because of these fucking uh, North Korea style fucking restrictions on businesses here that aren't even contributing massive amounts to the coronavirus, if at all. And I would say most of them not at all. And that's why I'm fired the fuck up, because this is it's it's the other side of the coronavirus that people aren't talking about, where alcoholism goes up drug use domestic violence suicide everything else is going to go up and these fucks are arbitrarily doing it and i say arbitrarily because i was listening to her news conference today and a reporter asked her point blank where's the science and data because that's a big thing with you fucking lefties your science (laughs) fuck data (laughs) we love that shit whatever yeah and uh, he said, where's the numbers? Where's the science? And you know what her fucking response was? Well, I, I, I don't have those numbers handy. So like two days ago, you, you throw out this res- announcement that you're going to fucking implement these restrictions. You have to know that that's going to be the first thing you're going to be asked about. And you fucking don't know what the goddamn numbers are. And you're going to fuck with hundreds of thousands, 700,000. That's a fucking large metropolitan area. I get it. I get it. Dude, I get it, but you got to look at it. Um, so we're we're days before Thanksgiving. It's it's the Monday before Thanksgiving, and 
they tried to say, um, we have some guidelines for celebrating Thanksgiving, meaning uh, limit how many people you have, et cetera. Yeah, on like Kim Jong Unsum, who fucking goes out to three hundred and fifty dollar plate dinners. I get with that. I get it. I get it. But like, ignore, ignore, ignore the man for a second and look at the policy. I get it. Uh, That's your side. That's your side is to ignore the Trump and look at his policy. <laughs> you know, it's like never mind what he does. Look at what he says. Yeah. And and so now I'm pulling that on you. Um, and yeah, that was shitty. That was bullshit. Like you got to lead by example. If you're going to be a leader, you got to lead by example. And myself, I, I get called out because we have meetings at, uh, at, at restaurants, outdoor social distanced. Everyone wears a mask except for when we're eating and drinking. Um, we all get tested too. That's the other thing. We get tested regularly, like multiple times a week between the whole group. Everyone's got to test every other day. Right, um, and we're not out gangbanging and shit, you, you know. And like, I get it, that's anecdotal, but uh, with with Kim Jong Un, <laughs> as you call him, yeah, you gotta lead by example, bro. If you're gonna be governor of California and there's there's an event where it's it, it, it contradicts your policy, you don't go. Yeah, and, and you get, know, yeah, and get and guess what he's doing right now? That piece of shit. Is he in Hawaii? No, <laughs> I well, no, well, that would be bad. That, but no, not nearly as bad. No, he's uh, currently quarantining because uh, him and his uh, um, family have come in contact with a uh, CHP officer who uh, has got who, that who, Rona. Who got, yeah. See, yeah. If he catches the Rona, like, you know, when, when Trump caught it, Trump Jr., all these people, it's like, yeah, big surprise. They deny it, first but, of all. And then they're all, they're all super spreading. But but Kim Jong Un, as you as you call him. He's calling the shot saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. And then he goes and does it all. And then if he catches it, yeah, fuck him. Yeah, and, and I apologize. I don't know exactly what date it was found out that um, the uh, the officer tested positive. But presumably it was recent if he's quarantining now. And that dinner was about a week ago. Right. He should have been quarantining after that dinner period. At least as a show of good faith. Well, he he dis he disappeared. He wasn't uh, he he wasn't there uh, for uh, the announcement of the new restrictions in California. They th Holy shit! What a puss. Yeah. What a puss, puss man. If uh, you're gonna if you're gonna put, debit like and okay, so you know me. I am all about ending this fucking virus. Sure. And we all I, are. I am all about eliminating the spread, despite. You know, I'm out squeeing. I get it. But uh, like I said, I'm different <laughs> because, uh, you know, the testing and the social distancing and it's all outdoors. There's and groups of four. If there's more than four, there's two different tables. There's nothing there. That's my excuse. That's how I justify my hypocrisy. But I'm not an anti-masker. I'm not out there protesting. I'm not out there doing this crazy shit in big groups of people. I, if I'm not... Working or squeeing, I'm I'm sitting around watching my dick get smaller. But here, you know? like, and that and that's the thing that we can all agree on, like being in large groups, mask us. Well, except here in California, because they said, uh, uh, like the protests back in June and everything, uh, those didn't count. You you were allowed to go out and protest. That 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 was literally on L.A. County's list of things from uh, Edgar Winter, aka Barbara Ferrer. Uh, yeah, that's uh, of, that, of acceptable. That's, that's partisan. That's part. That's that's. You, that's a, that's an oxymoron, right? And Public health because all and I've, partisan issues. All I've been hearing for fucking months is how this isn't a political issue. This isn't a partisan issue. It's a virus. It doesn't care what your political beliefs are. But then when it happens on the left, I don't hear a goddamn word from I agree. fucking anybody. I agree. I will say that. I I will agree to that as a person on the left. Right. I will say that during the middle, uh, like the beginning stages of this, when all the pro not even the beginning, like a couple months after everybody was locked down, yeah. everyone was out there protesting, and then ultimately the sentiment was the ends justify the means. It's more important that we go out and protest than it is quarantine and save ourselves from this fucking horrific virus. right because what was and the, that's bullshit well what was the key point of those protests they were angry over the loss of an innocent life at the hands 
of circumstances that shouldn't have been allowed to take that life. So what do they do? They expose themselves and other people to a virus that they're going to go home and take to their families and their friends. And guaranteed, there's people who probably died from contracting that virus from those people. So that's the ultimate hypocrisy. So going back full circle to this shit with Barbara Ferrer, if you're going to implement these types of lockdowns, because there's a scale in this, right? Prevent it, prevention of coronavirus and ultimately elimination of it. And our economy and our jobs and our ability to, you know, continue to make our own livelihoods. And when those scales start tipping too far one way or the other, we need to balance shit out again. So if you're going to lock down restaurants, it's going to affect hundreds of thousands of people. You better be goddamn sure that they're the fucking reason that this shit is getting worse. And if you show up to a press conference and say, "Eh, well, I don't have the numbers handy, knowing full well that that's going to be the first thing you're going to be fucking asked about, that is goddamn bullshit. And it tells me that you don't have those fucking numbers and you don't have the science and data. I see what you're saying. Yes. I see. What I, I and I, I'm not on your side. I'm not not on your side. I'm saying that we 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 put these we put recent guidelines in place for Thanksgiving, and we say, hey, let's limit it to six people. And everybody said, look at the government canceling Thanksgiving. And again, I didn't learn this from GI Joe. I didn't learn this from from Call of Duty. But you are as strong as your weakest link, and here in California. We're as weak as we are in Huntington Beach, where they're all out there protesting, coughing on each other. And and as much as I want to say Bakersfield, Fresno, whatever, Huntington Beach, rich motherfuckers, they're the ones out there protesting this shit. So because there's going to be a huge spike coming because of Thanksgiving, because people will not fucking obey the, the, the rules. Oh, dude, there's already they have been- to put in some kind of impl- they have to do something to help control the spread. Now, I'm not saying that this was the right thing. The restaurants, man, I go to these things and I understand that's hip- hypocritical of me. It sounds like right. And the way I justify it sounds like I'm a hypocrite. Like I said, mass social distance, get tested. None of us have ever gotten the, the Rona or AIDS or a- HPV. But in this particular case, it's it's there's going to be a mad spike in California and people are going to die and they have to do something. And I'm not saying that this is it. Yeah. But outside of canceling Thanksgiving. You know, they're left with limited options. OK, but imagine let's say you have car problems, right? Imagine going to a repair shop and the mechanic says, uh, well, I'm hearing a pretty uh pretty bad knocking from your engine and uh you say to the mechanic well, can you change my brakes for me uh, okay but your your, your engine <laughs> yeah. needs your engine your, your engine is the immediate problem here yeah your brakes are going to need change soon they're still okay for the moment but your your engine needs now and that's those fucking large crowds and the ones that are causing the the, the massive spread of this shit mm-hmm. and the brakes are people fucking going out to restaurants and well, and that's that's the thing. So so if it is the people going out to rest now, the new the new restrictions are uh, everything is closed at 10 p.m., which which is uh, which is fairly reasonable. It sucks, but it's reasonable. Now, what they need to focus on is like okay, so if we put in restrictions where all restaurants have to close down, and the consequences of that are that even more despite the thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses that have gone under. And I understand I'm fully on the side of the fact that people are dying from this. Okay. I'm just looking at it from a perspective of people need their livelihoods. Also thousand, like again, we, I I cited the number 5,500 on the last podcast referencing several months previous to that. I don't know what it is in LA right now. I don't know how many thousands of businesses in LA County or LA proper have gone under because of this. But if if you look at, if if, if you're going to close down the restaurants and you think, okay, however many people that's going to save, you have to factor in that people are going to protest it. Like they just did in Huntington beach. Like they did the last time and the time before that. Over beach closures, man. They're going to be out there protesting. So how many people are going to catch the Rona from, from these massive, massive thousands of people or hundreds of people, maybe a thousand people gathering, protesting over this? Um, well, well and here, here's the other thing. All right. So now 
you uh, you want to go see your buddy or your girlfriend or your family who lives across town, and God damn it, your favorite restaurant's fucking closed now. Well, what are you going to do? Maybe go pick up some food, but where are you going to go? Over to that fucking person's house. Everybody's going to congregate in- right. indoors. I don't in disagree with Poorly that. ventilated areas, so all you're doing is... You're shifting where the virus is is getting spread if it's coming from people going to restaurants. I, and again, they haven't even fucking provided any data. They're like, Which We're exactly. Going if they provide the data, we'd be all for that, right? Yeah. Well, there's a reason fucking Edgar Winter like didn't do shit outside <laughs> the '70s, and Barbara Frere needs to fucking go <laughs> now for the same goddamn reason. I don't know, man. Edgar Winter had that fucking badass song called Frankenstein, which yeah. sounds a lot like this woman, <laughs> but. I agree. I agree that uh, this isn't where you necessarily pick it apart, but you, Kim Jong Un, as you call him, he, he's put between a rock and a hard place. And what he needs to stop doing, because this this thing with him at a at a at a spreader event isn't the first time he's done something like this. No, he's like, he's a, he's a fucking American version of Justin Trudeau. He he's a fucking virtue signaling ah. asshole who does stupid shit, and he, he has great hair. Both those gentlemen have great hair. I'll say that for him. But they're a bunch of fucking hypocrites. But whatever, man. We can sit on this all night. But with Thanksgiving right around the corner, though, uh, what are some of your uh, fondest or maybe not so fondest memories of uh, the holidays? Doesn't need to be Thanksgiving. Could be Christmas, New Year's. It could be International Anal Bead yeah, Day. Say, one, like, one of your favorites, whatever it is. I've never ruined. I've never ruined a Thanksgiving. Uh, have you ever ruined International Anal Bead Day? Um. Well. Okay. <laughs> Wait. No. 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 Is no. Nah, nah, no. Nah, no is day, nah, nah, nah. As soon as you said that, like my only experience with anal beads. I- <laughs> <laughs> this is already up to a great start. We're moving this to the front of the podcast. Buddy. My only experience with anal beads, which is, I hope that's not what people pick up from this podcast, and that's a sound clip. So I worked at a bar when I was uh, eighteen. Which in Winnipeg is the legal drinking age. Well, yeah. And uh, we had, that. we tried a bunch of different things. You know, we had Wednesday nights at the Charlie in Charleswood. Yeah. You know, way back in the day, shout out to those days. Um, we had punk rock night and it was amazing. We had a bunch of bands play. Fuck yeah, it was great. And the bands got paid. Dude. Whatever, whatever. One night we had a, a stripper night. Someone fucking did that. Yeah. And then uh, we were like, all right, let's see what happens. Two strippers go up doing their thing. One bends over on all fours and the other one starts shoving anal beads up her ass. Yeah. I'm on board. One after the other. The thing is, it was like, it was like watching uh, uh, one of them clown cars (laughs) in (laughs) reverse (laughs) where they just kept going in. Uh, Did did somebody tie off a safety rope on the end of that thing or? uh... Well, she got it all the way in, and everybody's like, gross. (laughs) Like, nobody, like, at first, everyone was cheering, you know? Yeah. I'm standing there derping out of my fucking head, because, like I said, I'm, uh, you know, Spectrum Boy. Yeah. And uh, I've never seen anything like that. No one's ever, to this day, that has never been shown to me. I don't know anything about that. And I saw it, and uh, watching, vomiting in my mouth, because I was taking, I was working the door, not the bar that day. And, uh, oh God, I, I think I have a feeling where this is going, but finish your story. Gross, and gross, see gross. If it's where I think. And then here's the thing. Um, she, the others, the one, they started, the, the stripper started pulling it out, you know, and it was like one by one. Yeah. Then, <laughs> <and> then, <laughs> I don't nice. know why that would turn anybody on. And then it got stuck. And we all thought it was part of the act. <laughs> uh oh. And then they had to stop. And then, uh, the 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 girl who who had the things in her butt crawled off stage like a donkey with a tail and everything, <laughs> and, and then the other driver is like, you know, she shook her tits a little. She's like, that's all, folks. <laughs> and she goes backstage, and then we're all just like, oh, is that it? You know, and you you hear them trying to pull it out. <laughs> Yep. And they can't do it. We had to call an ambulance. See, and that's the that, ambulance came to the bar, which every time that happens, it's always because of a fight or whatever. Or somebody passed out. But this time I was like, well, you see, ambulance driver, uh, <laughs> stripper in the back. So the, so the ambulance driver being from Winnipeg, he's like, oh, yeah, here we go. And he just rolls up his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I've seen this a dozen times before. And he got it out. He didn't even bring her back. He was just like, all right. 
one at a time, one at a time. And he's and he's like, can I touch you? Can I do this? He was wearing gloves. He was very professional. And he's like, can I, can I, can I every step yeah. of the way? And she was like, yes, yes, yes. And eventually the whole thing came out and we all clapped. And it's like, oh, there's the rest of the show. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, they should have done that on stage, man. Uh, Why did I tell that story? What were we talking about? <laughs> Um, and no, no, I was, I was talking about like uh, memorable holidays, uh, but uh, see, that's why you fucking tie the string on the end of it, because if you need to do that fucking uh, weed whacker start and the lawnmower start, yeah. man, that, yeah, well, see, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought like someone was like, all right. Oh, yeah. And we'll, then she we'll pulls out her to fucking it. small. Yeah. And then line. she just fucking like fucking shit blasts everybody. You know, it's. Oh, no, it's nothing like that. But did, did, did the ambulance driver get her phone number after that? Because I figure like. No, that ambulance driver, I feel like, I don't say this disparagingly, I feel like he liked men because he was repulsed by everything that was, like, you could tell in his face. He was well, like, well, well, fair- uh, this again, and he just pulled everything out, and then uh, everybody was applauding him as a hero. Oh, that and makes just, sense like, Get away from because me. it's ass play, and he's like, no, oh, I'm a perfect. No, no, that's, that's exactly what, what you were saying. That, that's yeah, you, saying. you are 100% right. I'm, I'm basing that on the fact that, like, all the female employees – we're like basically pointing butts at him. You know what? That's like, you don't, you don't, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you're not, not when you perform a heroic women. act, whatever. He was not interested. And I'm, I have, I'm not saying he's gay. I'm just saying he was disinterested in, in the, in the, in the, in the bravado that he was receiving. Uh, uh, fair enough. All right. Anyways. So holidays being ruined. I only ruined Christmas a few times with my uh, family. Well, well, mine, I, I, I touched on this uh, before on the podcast, probably. Again, I'm drunk. I was probably drunk when I told this story. But so uh, Irish Christmas, me, me and my sister decided we we're going to do <laughs> Irish fucking Christmas. I know this fucking story. This is a good one. This is a good one. Go ahead, Brandon. Sorry. Yeah. So it was a day after Christmas, Boxing Day in your fucking native Canada. And uh, so we go to uh, this uh, bar in uh, Colorado Springs, uh, Jack Quinn's. Shout out to those motherfuckers. I don't know if they're still going or not, but one of my old uh, watering holes. And, uh, oh, holy shit, dude. By by night's end, like, we closed out the fucking bar. I had put away, like, ten different shots of ten different Irish whiskeys. There's, like, seven or eight Guinnesses. God knows what else fucking got thrown in the fucking mist, but I am sauced at the end of the fucking night, man. Just sauced like a tipsy cow. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, well, here's a... Yeah, yeah, with Saucy Ape Dave. And so, at some point uh, during the night, I was still cognizant enough that I gave my sister my car keys. I'm like, I can't drive, being the responsible fucking drunk shit that I am. At some other point during the night, I got those keys back, and I don't fucking remember how. And uh, so we're walking out, and uh, my sister's asking for the car keys. I'm like, oh, I'll drive. She's like, I, I don't think that's a good idea, Brandon. Uh, yeah, you don't seem like in a good condition. I'm like, well, what the fuck? And uh, Shout out to Rachel Albuquerque. She probably is listening. Oh, uh, yeah, eventually. Yeah, Shout out to Joe Albuquerque. He's probably listening. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, fucking Mario Albuquerque. Mario! Love that guy. I sent him a drunk fucking message thanking him for driving this whole time. Oh God! Yeah, we got. <laughs> it was yeah, over well, the top, and then I went back and deleted it. <laughs> God, yeah. We'll we'll touch on that. Anyway, sorry. Continue. We'll touch on that in a second, but um, yeah. So anyhow, and uh, so I get I, I I get enraged. I'm pissed. I'm like, what What do you mean? It's my car and my keys. How dare you? And I I get pissed off, and I'm like, all right, one more one more thing about the fucking keys. You say one more thing, I'm fucking walking home. And she stands there in, like, silence for, like, five seconds. I'm like, God damn it, that's it. I'm walking home. <laughs> I grab my keys, I throw them on the ground, and I start walking. Now, mind you, day after Christmas in Colorado Springs, it's 17 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I don't know what that means. That's like it's, saying it's, 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 it's orange outside. It's purple. It's probably it's purple degrees. It's probably, like, minus 8, minus 10 in fucking Canada. <laughs> Every weather. Everywhere else it uses Celsius. But it's way below fucking freezing. And so I start fucking walking home at like 2.30 in the goddamn morning. And I'm pissed off already. You wearing shorts? I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing a white t-shirt and a football, a mesh football jersey. So you're Proud Boys uniform. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. That, oh, that's fucking rich coming from Proud Boy haircut Dave. It's not Proud Boy haircut Dave. It's, it's cut it short so I can wear a hat, Dave. 
I got it. Fucking liberals. Sorry, I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but but, but continue. Yeah. So anyhow, along the way home, like I come across this Christmas display, and I become Scrooge McFucking Duck at this point. And I see this fucking reindeer in this fucking yard. And mind you, this is before Nest and uh, all the fucking door ring bells with cameras and shit like that. And I see that fucking deer. It just pissed me off. So I fucking punted it like a little chihuahua across the fucking yard, tore it in half, left it there. I took off from there, just pissed the fuck off. And I make it probably about a mile, mile and a half down the road. And here comes, here comes my parents. Shut the fuck up, Dave. <laughs> I know the story that fucking makes me laugh. And <laughs> so, so here comes my, yeah, like <laughs> my mom's driving my dad and sister in there because we're home for the holidays. <laughs> And they're coming down the fucking street, and they spot me, you know, the big, fat fucking, like, whale. And I'm wearing black clothes and like, snow-clad Colorado, so my fat ass isn't hard to, like, find. And like, oh, there he is! And they pull off the side of the road. So I start takeoff running as far as my fat ass, like, can run. And, like, I hide behind a house. And, like, oh, no, there he's always over there. So I get up and start, start waddling away like a fucking penguin again. Oh, Jesus Christ. And, it's funny because uh, I know your family and I know they're like, oh, there's a fat ass doctor. <laughs> yeah, that asshole. And your mom is sweet as she is. She's like, yeah, there's the fat ass penguin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And so they finally get up. They're like, fine, you know, fuck it. You know, he'll find his way home. He'll pass out. The cops will find him something. You know, uh, uh, it, it's a family tradition to uh, quote Hank Williams Jr. So, holy shit. So I. I finally get home after like three plus fucking hours. Nobody gets up to see if I'm okay. They're like, fuck him. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, it's not the cops. Well, your knocking. dad was in the military, you know? Yeah. Well, Shout yeah. to Harry Collins. Love oh, you, brother. Yeah, yeah we're going to have my brother. dad. Brother. We're going to have my dad on the <laughs> Let podcast. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> we're going to have my dad on the podcast. We're going to have both stories. our dads on the We got to convince oh. my dad to come on, though, man. Yeah. My uh, dad's a cop and doesn't want to say shit. Now, we'll have him talk to my dad first, and that's how we'll convince him. Um, so agree. anyhow, but for as fucked up as I was, um, I was cognizant enough to take my own temperature, and it was like 95.5 degrees. And from what I remember from EMT school, about 94 degrees, once you get there, a little bit below, that's when hypothermia starts setting in. So my fat ass got lucky on a couple different fucking uh, metrics, but uh, I did get some exercise, which I needed in the worst way possible. Uh, I probably I didn't really ruin uh, the holidays because my family probably expected something like that from me at some point until mm -hmm. I got my DUI and, mm -hmm. you know, upped at one. So, yeah, that was uh, that was Irish Christmas and uh, it was a one and only never to be repeated. Isn't that the whole point of Irish Christmas? Well, does it get repeated? You know. Well, uh, yeah, it might it, not be around the next time. Right. Well, and that's the thing when we labeled it Irish Christmas. What do you expect? It's Irish fucking Christmas. Like I, you know, I don't know what else you're supposed to do but get drunk and fight and with your family and fuck shit up, and then the next day everyone's on a happy go lucky again. It sounds like Canadian Christmas, to be honest. <laughs> Like Irish, Canadian, British, you know, Australian. We all do this kind of shit. Whereas Americans are like, oh, no, we only do that in secret. And it's way worse. <laughs> yeah. For, for, we, we have our we still have our hang ups in America, man. We got a long ways to fucking go with the rest of the world. Like, I, yeah, I should be living in fucking England or Australia or some shit or even Ireland at this point. Or, 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 or Canada. What's up? You would love Canada, dude. Soon, it, like as soon as it's possible again, we're taking a boys trip. Me, you. Conrad, Adam, Jarrett, Jimmy, Greasy Round with the Long Dick. We're all going to fucking Winnipeg. Uh, and and what my biggest fear is, like, I haven't been there in a few years. You know, and when I was there, I was playing in bands. I'm fucking around, yeah. doing all kinds of crazy shit. I feel like I'm going to go back there. And they're like, oh, we don't do that anymore. Yeah, you know? but that's even better. That's, that's better for us. But that's the thing. No it's matter what, like, Portage Place still exists. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll find it out. Anyways, all right, so we're at an hour. Or fifty nine thirty, so we got this other little segment that uh, we we decided to try out where we're gonna give you guys bad advice or at least advice based on 
how badly we would fuck something up. So you should do the opposite. Okay. Yeah. And if you've made it all the way through this podcast tonight so far, you have a pretty fucking good idea what's going to come out of our mouths. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we, there's been a lot so far. So, um, I, I, I had just recently shout out to the people that responded to this. I'm sorry that I'm not going to go through it all because going through your message, I only posted on Instagram and going through your message requests on there is like going through a Motel 6 with the black light. So I only read... Uh, That's usually where I meet my hookers. Something box. from the followers. All right. But this girl, Sammy. Yes. Her name is uh, Italian Sammy Gal. She says... I, I So again, I said, what's some advice you need? I'll All tell right. you what to do the opposite. She says, cutting family members out of your life. Now, how would you go about that? Now, the thing is, like, again, I had prefaced it with, I will tell you what what, what not to do based on how I fucked it up. Now, yeah. I've never had to cut out family out of my life. Have you, Brandon? Uh, but no, but how would, how would Harry Collins, your father, military man? Yes. Hardcore Republican that I get along with just fucking great. Yes. By the way, I get along better with Republicans than I do Democrats, despite me being a far left. Politically, I am as far left as you could possibly get. Yeah, because they don't go fucking Antifa and brick your fucking windows and, uh, you know. No, they don't. Here's the thing. So it's like when we show up at Joe's house, right? Yeah. Joe is like, uh, you know, he knows he listens to the podcast and he's like, "Mm, he loves you. He thinks I'm a fucking idiot. Well, we, I mean, we both do, like, but I still love like, you. He's like, I wanted to lay out all my Trump shit <laughs> on the front lawn for what you got here. And I, think that, <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Yeah. And I get the, I, I get humor. Okay. Dude, I it, understand humor first and foremost above anything else. And s- most Republicans, I'm saying Republicans do more than li- liberals are funnier. Yeah. In terms of like the, the funniest people are usually more left leaning. Sure. But. but as a whole, people on the boots on the ground level, Republicans have a better sense of humor. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm liberal. Yeah, because like I, what I happen- want everyone to have medication. I want everyone to have free education. But right, but like what happened? So we got there. We all fucking like you know we, we drank at the house together. We talked. No one got into fights. There was nope. no like get the fuck out of this nope. house. No, nope. we oh, all no. sat down like adults, and then we. You know, and then we. Uh, and I didn't hold out. back either. I told him like I told him exactly what I thought. He asked me, and I told him. I asked him. He told me. Right, exactly. And uh, you know, and uh, uh, fucking uh, shout out to Joe. Like uh, you know, love uh, you, uh, Joe. Offered us. Uh, you know, we're gonna go uh, party with him again soon. Oh yeah, dude. He's the only reason I'll go back to Albuquerque. Yeah. But he, as he pointed out, he doesn't technically live in Albuquerque. He lives in that gated community just outside of it. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah. we should move there. <laughs> I, it's not bad, man. It's nice living there, and it's cheap too. Anyway, sorry. What were you saying? No, but like you know, r- roof over the head. You know, place to stay. Uh, uh, bought his fucking lunch in the, in the next day, man. Like fucking heart of gold. Oh yeah, great, great, great guy. Love that guy. And and I usually do. Uh, I usually get along better with the public. Anyways, so uh, the, Sammy asked us, um, cutting family members out of your life. How would you do that? I, I for me personally. I've never had to cut someone out of my life, but if I were to do it, I would, I would position them to where they would cut me out. It's, it's just like, I, I, I don't like breaking up with girls. I, I, I prefer to be the one that gets dumped. And, and when it's looking like I don't want to be in that relationship anymore, I just start doing shit that will get me dumped. Fair enough. (laughs) You know? So that's what you got to do. Instead of cutting them out of your life, just start doing shit that'll make them cut you out of your out of their life. Oh, no, you know no, I saying? actually, I absolutely agree with you. And I got the fast track to that. All right. So uh, <laughs> you, you, you said her name is Dago something. Grease. No, no, Sammy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but didn't you say she was like uh, Italian or some shit like that? Oh, her Instagram name is uh, Italian Sammy girl. All right. Perfect. All right. So I got the solution. Right. So you're dirty Dago. And uh, 
you go home to your family, right? And uh, being an Italian woman, you're going to have that fucking hair lip, right? Make sure you shave that. Hold on. Make sure you shave that thing off before you go home. And they're going to think you're ashamed of your uh, Italian heritage. And you're going to be right out of the family. Rude. They're going to throw meatballs and spaghetti at you. <laughs> They're, they, stop yep. it. they're they're gonna stop it, Brad. <laughs> what? I mean, I mean, stop oh, it. Dave, uh... stop it. Stop what you're doing. What? Stop it. You can't be. <laughs> you can't be hilarious. Jesus Christ. Okay. I mean, like, yeah, that's that's the ultimate goal. If you want to cut somebody out of your life, um, and you're too much of a pussy to do it, like I am, yeah. I don't like cutting people. I just start acting. Like a repulse, I, I figure out their weaknesses, like their deal breakers. Yeah. And then I exemplify that. And then eventually they dump me. Uh, I'm going to grab um, some more whiskey because. All right. Yeah. I'm going to read off the next uh, thing. We're we're over an hour now anyway. Let's just fucking keep recording, man. We're on- well, no, we're, we're finishing up with this shit. Um, okay. So I did, I did go into the message requests. All right. Which, again, is like going through a fucking Motel 6 with a black light. But this guy... Seems pretty cool. Ray likes Bert Kreischer. Jesus Christ. The whole his whole account is set up to be a fan base fan account for him. Uh, his name is Cool A Champ. Just how it's spelled. Cool A Champ. He sounds um, like a real A hole. <laughs> so he's asking how to start a podcast. Now, as someone with infinite bad advice to give that you should do the opposite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would suggest Okay, so the Valley Boys, we we did two episodes, two in my backyard before we signed with the network, and that all sounds well and good. Uh, coronavirus happened, some shit went down that we can't fucking talk about. On God here. damn it! Let's just say, uh, uh, don't sign with the network. <laughs> get your own ads, you know, because we get we get ads offered to us that we can't take. Because we're signed with a network. Uh, we're working that out. We'll get all that separated from everything. And then we'll be able to bring you the Valley Boys on a more consistent basis. Um, here, here, Here's what I'll say. Um, is, uh, because uh, brother, uh, brother Dave here, as much shit as I give him, uh, he, he was cool enough to bring me along, uh, you know, for this ride. Now, granted, obviously, I'm, I'm the more popular one. He's a more handsome one. Fair enough. But um, the thing is, do what you know. Just go with what you know, and that's how you're going to fucking bring in people. Simple, yeah, that's, that's real that. advice, though. I, I, <laughs> oh, oh, how to fuck things up. All right, well, listen to our podcast and uh, yeah. do the exact opposite. Do the exact opposite. You'll be the biggest podcast there ever was. All right, let's cut it, let's cut it off. Um, so we are the Valley Boys. Where, where do people follow us, Brandon? Uh, you can uh, find us on Instagram and Twitter at Valley Boys Pod. You can find uh, Dirty uh, Canadian Dave Saucy Ape Weasel at oh. at Dave Weasel, uh, Instagram and Twitter. And you can find uh, my sexy self sexy. at El Oso Blanco. Shut the fuck up, Dave. At El Oso Blanco on Twitter and Instagram. El Oso Blanco, 69. Did you uh, say the 69 part? No, I didn't because I'm a little bit drunk. Yeah, uh, he's at yeah. Elso Blanco 69 on Twitter and Instagram. But he has one of them loser accounts. I, I got that uh, that that blue chew, that uh, that Viagra pill next to my name, that blue check mark. You got shit because you, you got a loser account. Well, Anyways, I know Dave gives Fred me a boner. is a loser. Oh. Ah! 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 I was trying to cut it off. Ah. Me. Anyways, thanks. If you made it all the way through, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to follow us. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. That's how we fucking thrive. We are the Valley Boys. Peace out from Reseda, California in Brandon's garage. I have Dave Weasel. This is Brandon Collins. Go fuck yourself. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. That too.